section 6.8 indeterminate forms and the logical rule. In this section, we will just practice limits of the functions that they form indeterminate forms. In this case, we will use the L'Hopital rule. I mean, the L'Hopital rule is the rule. Let's, let's go through. Uh, when we have a function f and g differentiable and g prime of x is not zero on the open interval i that, uh, that uh, contains a, except possibly at a, then we have the situation that function limits at as x approaches a for the function f of x and g of x are zero, or the same limits at a are infinities. Okay. Then we will have we will see the ratio, which means we will the ratio will create a form zero over zero or infinity over infinity. That means this is the first and this is the second indeterminate form. We do have actually seven indeterminate forms, but these two are the most important because we have to, the rest of them, we have to convert to that ratio, okay? Then when you see this ratio, we can, we can use the rule. Limit as x goes to a of that ratio, f of x over g of x is exactly the same like the ratio of the derivatives. In my previous video, I was proving this. That means we know that this is definitely true. One note, please remember we not you applying this rule. I will always put h, which means I did change something. I did apply the rule. This fraction, this ratio is, please remember, we will not use the quotient rule for the derivative. And also, uh, we can only apply, we can only apply uh, that rule when we see these two indeterminate forms. We have to see that ratio because f of x over g of x is the same like f prime of x over g of x close to a, as x goes to a. Okay? That means please remember no quotient rule, just the derivative of the top and then derivative of the bottom because as we're not really differentiating, we applying derivative, derivatives through that tool. And this is the list of all of the indeterminate forms. As I said, this one and this one are the most uh, important one, I can say this way, with respect to the, the L'Hopital rule. And then we may also see the product uh, difference and three powers. Okay, zero to the zero, infinity to the zero, one to the infinity. None, that's, that's, yeah, that's all of them. Okay, let's see. Exercise number one. Limit as x goes to one, x squared minus x over x squared minus one. When I substitute one, of course, I'm getting zero over zero. And actually, when we have the ratio zero over zero, the ratio of the same type of functions, we don't even have to use the L'Hopital rule because we can nicely, we can nicely use our algebra because I can factor out x okay, and I can factor out denominator x squared minus one, x squared plus one, and we, we can nicely see the common factor. It's been the common factor, which is actually the common zero, one minus one, one minus one. It's gone, okay? And then I have x on the top, which is one, x plus one, which will be one plus one, one half, okay? We may use the L'Hopital rule, but please remember, we have to, yeah, we have to do, we have to be always efficient with respect to time and different things. We only have 24 hours and we really have to manage that. Okay, but let's, yeah, let's do it. The L'Hopital rule, I am definitely allowed to apply the L'Hopital rule. Let's see if we can get the same answer. Derivative of x squared minus x is 2x minus 1. Derivative uh, of x squared minus 1 is just 2x. Okay, and now when I substitute 1, 2 minus 1, 2 times 1, 2. It's the same thing, okay? But as I said, we can use the, not always we will be able to use just the algebra and arithmetic, okay? That's the reason that we have this tool. Exercise number two. 
limit at infinity, okay, as, as x goes to the infinity, x squared minus x over 2x squared minus 1. When I think about the infinity, I definitely see that the quadratic function parabola goes to the infinity and the bottom one goes to the infinity. I have my indeterminate form. And this one we also remember, uh, I can apply the L'Hopital rule or I can think about uh, the relative rates of growth. Okay? Having the ratio of the same type of function, I can nicely see that the, we have to look at the um, uh, degree of the polynomial, degree of the function. That means this is the second degree, x squared, and this is also the second degree. That means if the degree is the same, okay, we're just taking the ratio of the leading coefficients, one and two, one half. Okay, that's it, that, that's it. We remember, we remember this type, okay, this type of limit. I can still apply the L'Hopital rule because I do have my indeterminate form. And I can limit at infinity. Derivative of the top is just 2x minus 1. Oh, not 2, it's just x. Oh, no, it's, it's okay. I was just misled by that one. 2x minus 1. And then 4x minus 0. OK, but what I have, I think I have, again, linear function at infinity with the positive slope goes to the infinity. That means I still have infinity of infinity. I can apply the L'Hopital rule. OK, derivative of the top of the 2x minus 1 is 2. Derivative of 4x is 4. Of course, my final answer is the same. But as I said, we can definitely save time if we have this type of function. Okay? Also, let me just mm, limit at infinity. I will just add one. x squared minus 1 over x cubed plus 5. Okay? It's the same. It's infinity of infinity. I will not apply the L'Hopital rule because that's really easy. We know for this type of function, of course. But what we see, uh, we see the same ratio of two polynomials and investigating the degree x squared versus x cubed. If the denominator is winning in terms of the degree, we always, the limit will be always zero. Okay, please remember this and please use this to, to, to speed up, if I can say this way. Or, if we have the case x cubed, maybe plus x minus 1 over 10x plus 1. OK, that's mean what we have. We do have, uh, again, the ratio of two polynomials. x, mm, let's look at the degree, x cubed versus x, versus x to the power of 1. And if numerator is winning and we add positive infinity, we will have infinity. Of course, we have to be careful because if this will be negative, we will have negative. We have to always adjust. We have to always look at the arithmetic. But assuming that all of the coefficients are positive, again, if the top polynomial is winning with respect to the degree, it's always infinity. Okay. Now we have a limit as x goes to the positive infinity, natural log of x over x minus 1. Natural logarithmic function at infinity, of course, goes to the infinity, and linear function goes to the infinity. That's we do have infinity over infinity. And in this case, I don't know if we can simplify, probably not. What we can do, because limit is still at infinity, I can still think about the relative rates of growth. Okay. I can. The relative rate of growth. We do have some, we can compare some functions because it's similar idea, infinity of an infinity. If this 
If these functions will be polynomials, I can look at the degree and we know what's happened. If the denominator is winning, it's zero. If the numerator is winning, it's infinity. If they are the same, they are comparable, we can, then we can apply some algebra or the L'Hopital rule. But what I see, I see function logarithmic ln of x versus x versus power function. Please remember, both of them are increasing function at infinity, if, if this is of course positive. Uh, however, function, uh, logarithmic function grows really slow. That means its algebraic function will be much, much faster. And I can even throw this situation. Logarithmic function is, it's, it's increasing, but it's, ex it's really slow y equals to x will be much, much faster. Okay? That means we can, we can nicely, yes, we can nicely, we can nicely see that this function is much, much slower. And then looking at the fraction, I see that my numerator, it's slower. Denominator is winning. The limit is zero. Okay? We can use the L'Hopital rule, but we, I will suggest but limits at infinity only, okay? Limits at infinity. We can apply the relative rates of growth. Okay, another limit. Now we have the limit at zero. Then we don't have, a, we, we, sh, we can't, we can't apply the relative rates of growth only at infinity. Okay, logarithmic function, L natural log one plus four X over X. When we put zero, we will have ln of one, ln of one is zero, and denominator is zero. Okay, I think this one is zero over zero, the good indeterminate form, I can apply the L'Hopital rule. Limited zero. Derivative of logarithmic function, ln of one plus four x is one over one plus four x times four derivative of the inner function and der derivative of the denominator is one. Okay, and substituting zero, I will have one, one plus zero times four over one. The limit is uh, four, the fraction, fraction looks fine. Okay, that means we do have a finite number and we can see zero over zero gave me a finite number. That's mean please, yeah, please. Always remember that the answer will be not zero, not always. Okay, another one, limit at zero as x goes to zero, x times sine of x over one minus cosine of x. Substituting zero, zero times zero because sine at zero is zero, cosine at zero is one, one minus one zero. Okay, another indeterminate form. I mean the same one, but another expression. Let's apply the L'Hopital rule. That H means that I'm applying the L'Hopital rule. Okay, I have product in the numerator. Okay, please note, derivative of X is one times sine of X plus X, derivative of sine of X is cosine of X. Derivative of negative cosine, it will be positive sine of X. Okay, limit as x goes to zero. And what we have? We have zero, zero. Actually, we again have zero over zero. Okay, I will apply the L'Hopital rule for the second time. Derivative of sine is cosine of x plus, and now I have another product. Derivative of x is one, Uh, one times cosine, that means I will just put cosine, and then x, derivative of cosine, is negative sine of x. Derivative of sine of x in the denominator is cosine of x. And what we have? We do have cosine at zero, plus another cosine at zero, and this will be zero, because x is zero, and cosine at zero. Cosine at zero is one, one plus one is two, over one, the final answer is two. Okay, again, really nice. 
but we did apply the L'Hopital rule twice. Okay. Limit at infinity, okay, we lucky, relative rates of growth, e to the x over x squared. Comparing exponential function, no, nice. and quadratic function, okay, exponential and quadratic function, we know how fast is the exponential. That's when please remember overall, if we have any exponential function, I can even write a to the x, okay, when a is of course greater than 1. And then any power function, okay, always exponential is winning, always. Okay, okay that means I see that my numerator is winning with respect to the denominator, the answer is infinity. I can also write this, but I know that my numerator is winning. If this limit will be the other way, the ratio, we will flip the ratio, limit at infinity, then I can see that my denominator is winning, the limit is zero. And I think please remember the relative rates of growth we can compare. You can still apply the L'Hopital rule, but we have to be more efficient. Oh, another limit at infinity. Now what I have, I have logarithmic function and I have power function. Always power function is faster than logarithmic. We remember logarithmic function is extremely slow. That means this one is x to the power of one third. That's power function. Denominator is winning, the limit is zero. Okay. relative rates of growth, okay? Now we have limit as x goes to zero, we can't apply the relative rates of growth. Okay, tangent of x minus x over x cube. Tangent at zero, zero minus zero, okay, zero and zero cube. Definitely the L'Hopital rule. Limit as x goes to zero, and let's see, derivative of tangent is secant square of x minus one x, and this is three x squared. Okay, secant at zero is one, one minus one is zero, and zero in the denominator. Again, the L'Hopital rule. Okay, now we have to be careful because we have secant square of x. Uh, we will use the chain rule. Derivative of secant square of x is 2 times secant times derivative of secant, which is secant x tangent x. Okay, and then 3x squared will give me 6x. Okay, and I see again Tangent x is zero and x is zero. That means I can apply for the third time. However, if we remember the property from calculus one, limit of, I can write for sine of x over x, as x goes to zero, this limit is one, okay? I mean, I can definitely see this. The same is for tangent. But let's see. Two secant x, and I can say square. Tangent is just <clears throat> sine of x over cosine of x. And we do have six x in the denominator. I mean, now I see limit is at, limit is at zero and sine of x over x, this, I can apply my property, is one, okay? Again, oh, I said I can definitely use the L'Hopital rule for the third time, but again, we have to be more efficient and use whatever tool is available for us. Okay, secant at zero is one. Two times one is just two. Uh, cosine at zero is <clears throat> also one. Uh, one third is the final answer. 
exercise number nine. Limit as x goes to pi from the left-hand side, sine of x over one minus cosine. Okay, sine at pi is definitely zero. Cosine at pi is, oh, hang on, one minus cosine at pi is negative one. Okay, I think somebody wanted to trick us. One plus one is two. And this is just a finite number, no problem. No zero in the denominator. Zero over two is just zero. That means having that type of expression, that type of like how the functions behave, we are not allowed to use the L'Hopital rule because we do have answer right away. Interesting. That means please be careful. Know the L'Hopital rule if it's something like that. Okay, limit at zero. e to the x minus 1 plus x over 5x squared. I see zero right away in the denominator, and then e to the zero is 1, 1 minus 1, 2, 0 plus 0, okay? And I will not think, I will just use, I mean I think, I will think, I will just use the L'Hopital rule. Derivative of e to the x, e to the x. Derivative of 1, 0. Derivative of x is 1, not 0. And this is 10x. Um, Oh, I, do you know what? I believe that we're supposed to have minus here because otherwise it will be not fun. Mm. Okay, because e to the zero is, e to the zero is one, one minus one is zero. Okay, we can leave it the original one because the original one will not give, let's actually leave it. Why, why am I changing? Uh, e to the zero is one, one plus one, and then is zero. Okay, that's mean maybe again is similar situation because what we have now, I mean, not exactly similar, but what we have now, we do have a small problem since we have zero in the denominator that we have to think a little bit longer than the previous question. However, we do not, we're not allowed to use the L'Hopital rule because that form is not for the L'Hopital rule. Only zero over zero or infinity over infinity. That means what we have, this is of course not zero, it's just because that was zero from the right hand side, that means it's a tiny number, positive, that means two over small number is of course big number and it's positive. The answer is positive infinity. Okay, actually good. Okay, now we see a product. X times ln of X, X is zero from the right, and the natural logarithmic function at zero from the right-hand side is negative infinity. Okay, that's we do have a product, okay? Indeterminate product form. I can't use the L'Hopital rule right away, but we will rewrite product as a quotient. I mean, what we, uh, we remember, when we have f times g, in order to get a quotient, I will keep one function on the top and I will flip the other one. Okay, that means this is one way to get a quotient, or I can do the other way. I can keep one function, the second one on the top, and I can flip in the denominator the other one. That means what I will do, I will definitely keep ln of x here and I will flip x. And now, let's check again. Natural logarithmic function at zero from the right is negative infinity, one over x, okay? When x is zero from the right goes up, goes to the positive infinity. Don't we, that, that doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, it's still infinity over infinity. So we now we do have we can use the L'Hopital rule. Okay, derivative of ln of x, it's one over x. Derivative of one over x is negative one over x squared. Let's simplify. Limit as x goes to zero. I can put negative and I can flip this. x squared over one. 
and the negative I can keep in front. It means simplifying x squared over x is just x. Okay, negative x, negative zero. We don't have negative zero is zero. That's when we did get zero, but we do have a proof. Please do not say the answer right away because that's not always, you know, that's not always the case. Another one, limit at infinity. Okay, at infinity, we can possibly use the relative rates of growth, but we have to see a fraction. We can't base on the product. But let's see, we have x times e to the negative x. That's what we have. Let's first of all check x goes to infinity, e to the negative infinity, I can say, e to the negative x at positive infinity, it will be zero. That's we do have indeterminate form. Let's rewrite the form as a quotient, and I will keep x this time, and we can see I can put e to the x because the negative is gone and it's convenient this way. You can always try. If you, will, if you will leave this one and you will put, if you will flip the other fraction and you will see that you're not going in the right direction, you can always come back and switch the order. Okay, and actually I can use my relative rates of growth. I have e to the x and x, exponential and power function. Exponential always grows faster. Denominator is winning, the answer is zero. You may also use the capital rule. But I would like to encourage you to use the relative rates of growth. Oh, even multiple choice question. <laughs> okay, let's see. Limit as x goes to 3 from the right hand side, x minus 3 times, times tangent of pi x over 6. Okay, that means I can definitely see this is 0. Uh, if I put 3, 3 over 6, it's 2 pi over 2 tangent at pi over 2 and this is right hand side that means i believe is negative infinity we can picture tangent we do have an asymptote and tangent looks like this this is pi over 2 and that's another part okay that we can see from the right hand side function goes down that's the reason that I put um, negative infinity. This is tan x. Okay, I have my indeterminate form. Oh, no, 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 I would like to keep the form. Product, I have to rewrite this in terms of the quotient. Oh, no. That's what I have. I can keep my function x minus 3 on the top. And when I put in the denominator one over tangent, actually one over tangent is cotangent. And I can put cotangent of the same angle. And let's actually check. Zero on the top. And cotangent at pi over two is zero. Yeah, because it's cosine over sine and uh, it's zero over one. If we like to, let me write cotangent of pi over 2 is cosine of pi over 2 and sine of pi over 2. This is 0, this is 1. The answer is 0. Okay, just a little bit of unit circle. Okay, I think we're ready to use the L'Hopital rule. I can write on here. Limit as x goes to 3 from the right hand side. Derivative of x minus 3 is 1. Okay, good. And then derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant square of the same angle, that's angle, times derivative of that angle. Derivative of pi over 6x is just pi over 6. Yeah, like derivative of 2x is just 2. Derivative of 3x is just 3. Derivative of pi 6 over x is just pi over 6. Okay, nice and easy. Okay, let's see what we have. We definitely have 1 on the top. Now we have, to, we have negat, negative, uh, negative pi over 6, which I can flip that value. And now 
we will have cos secant of, if I put instead of x3, of course I have pi over 2. Cos secant, <coughs> cos secant is 1 over sine. And sine at pi over 2 is 1. Okay, another, I mean, this is 1. The final answer is negative 6 over pi. Because I can just flip the number. And we do have that answer. Yeah, we really like to select the answer that we got. <laughs> okay, beautiful exam type question. Oh, now we're moving because I see the difference. I think probably it's the indeterminate form, the difference form. Let's see, secant at pi over 2 from the left-hand side. Secant, you may think again, we don't even have to know the graph of secant. Yes, yeah? like we know we have like different, but we can think that this is 1 over cosine. And tangent is actually sine of x over cosine of x. But we know tangent. And at pi over 2, cosine is 0. From the left-hand side, it's actually approaching above. That means it's positive. Yeah, I'm saying about cosine x, y, and this is pi over 2. That means it's 0. This is function cosine of x. It is 0, but from the left-hand side, it's above. That means it's positive 0. 1 over positive 0, 1 over small is big, positive infinity. Okay, now tangent at uh, pi over 2 from the left-hand side, uh, it's positive infinity. Yeah. I can, shall I draw tangent again? Then you will remember, hmm, why is, I change all of my settings. Okay, and this is pi over 2 from the right-hand side. Function goes up, positive infinity. Okay, that's why we have a difference. That's indeterminate form, but that's not the form ready for the L'Hopital rule. But we can nicely actually see. I can rewrite this, okay, as a fraction, and I can get common denominator, and I will have my ratio. That means let's do it. Limit as x goes to pi over 2 from the left-hand side. And I can see that the common denominator, it's ready for me, and 1 minus sine of x. Wow, I did rewrite as ratio. Let's check if the ratio is in determinate form. Sine at pi over 2 is 1. 1 minus 1, 0. Cosine at pi over 2 is 0. Perfect. Let's apply the L'Hopital rule, h pi over 2. Derivative of 1 is 0, negative sine, derivative of negative sine is negative cosine of x. And derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. And cosine at pi over 2 is 0. We don't have negative, but then we can cancel out. And sine at pi over 2 is 1. Okay, 0 over 1 is not a problem, but the answer is 0. But we do have a proof. Again, please do not write zero right away. e to the power of x plus e to the negative x minus e to the x at infinity. Okay, we have to be careful. We may possibly use the relative rates of growth, but we have to see the fraction. Uh, e to the power of x, e to the negative x is 0, that means this is definitely infinity, and this is infinity. Yeah? It, they are almost similar, but a little bit different. That means I can't say 0, I can't say infinity. Yeah? We definitely have to do something. And let's rewrite in terms of the ratio. I definitely see the common factor, e to the x. Oh no, maybe let's rewrite this one because when we have e to the x plus e to the e to the negative x, addition means that I can multiply the same base, then I can add the exponent. Okay. Limit at infinity. Now I can see the common factor e to the x and e to the x. I am factoring out. And then this will stay minus 1. 
Okay, now I have product, and we remember when we have product, it's nice because one of the parts, and I will keep the big part on the top, and I will flip e to the x, which e to the x flipped is e to the negative x. Now let's see what we have. E, e to the e to the negative x at infinity is zero and this is zero now e to the negative x everything is zero one minus one is zero zero over zero okay we do have indeterminate form let's apply the L'Hopital rule okay derivative of e to the negative to the power of e to the negative x is the same function times derivative of this exponent which derivative of e to the negative x is e to the negative x times negative one and this i can ignore it in the denominator i have e to the negative x derivative of e to the negative x is e to the negative x times negative one oh no and then looks like I can cancel out and e, e to the negative x at positive infinity is zero, e to the zero is one. Okay, the final answer is one. A little bit of arithmetic and exponential properties. But nice limit. Okay, another difference. x over ln of x, one, over x minus one. X is one, that's we do have one, over ln of one is a zero, but it's from the right hand side, that means it's positive because logarithmic function is above the x axis. And this one is also zero, that we do have one over zero is infinity, one over zero is infinity. Okay, indeterminate form. The difference, we will get a common denominator because that's the first step. I can't use the L'Hopital rule right away. The common denominator is ln of x times x minus 1. The first fraction we have to multiply by x minus 1. The second fraction we have to multiply by ln of x. Limit as x goes to. This will be x squared minus x. I am distributing minus ln of x and the product i will just keep the product oh maybe i can distribute time ln of x times x minus ln of x okay one minus one zero ln at ln, natural log at one is a zero this is zero and zero okay we can use the L'Hopital rule now. That's when you can see we do have zero over zero. From difference, we manage to get um, zero over zero, the, the indeterminate form that we actually need. Okay, let's see. limit as x goes to one from the right hand side. Derivative of x squared to x, derivative of x one, derivative of ln of x, 1 over x. Now we have product. Derivative of x is 1 times ln of x plus x times 1 over x minus 1 over x. Oh, wow. Let's see what we have numerically. Oh, 2 times 1 minus 1 minus 1. Oh, no, 0. 0 plus 1 minus 1. Zero. Oh, no, we do have zero over zero. Mm. Okay, I will put here, and I think we have to apply the L'Hopital rule again, and it's okay. Limit as x goes to. Okay, derivative of 2x is 2, this is zero, and derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. Okay. Uh, derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. This is actually 1, that means derivative is 0, and derivative of uh, 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. Okay, 
Now I have two plus one because this is one and negative and negative is positive and I have one plus one. Okay, finally I have my finite number. I mean, not always is the finite number, but final answer. Okay, the logical twice. And important thing is to rewrite the difference in terms of the quotient. Okay. Oh, and I think I have one or two uh, power forms. Let me have x to the power of x, of course, is zero to the power of zero in determinate form. And I think this is another algebraic challenge because the power form we have to rewrite uh, as a quotient. <laughs> but what we will do, we probably remember this. When I have a number, any number, I can rewrite the number in terms of the exponential form, e to the power of ln of a. It's one of the cancellation equation because e and ln are the inverse to each other. We can cancel them out. Okay, of course, I would like to keep just my number a, but if I don't know what to do with my number a, I have to rewrite this way. That's what I will do. This is my number a. And let's rewrite limit as x goes to zero from the right. I will put e to the power of ln, ln and of my number a, x to the power of x. Really nice. Uh, now we can see that we have e as a, as a mm, outer function, okay? but e is just a constant. That means what I will do. Uh, I mean, and it's continuous function, I'm saying that the limit is telling me that x is zero and I can see x here. That means uh, the limit will only apply to the outer function. I mean, and, the, and the, uh, later we will apply, uh, we will also keep the, out, the outer. No, okay, let <laughs> me. Okay, looking at this, we can see that e is e to the power of something. And that inner function, that something, relates to x. That means we can rewrite this as a e, and the limit will only focus on this. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. And I can only compute the limit of the exponent. Of course, I'm not ignoring my outer function. I have to get this number, which will be this limit, and e to the power of that number is my final answer. Okay. That means let's compute just the limit of the exponent. We have ln of x to the power of x, and we know that that x can travel in front. That means I can put x, ln of x. Okay, but this is just my exponent. Okay, now I have product, which this is zero, this is negative infinity, that's when you can see now I even change from, yeah, I change a little bit. Let's rewrite this as a quotient. I will keep ln of x and I will keep one over x. I think we did this limit today. This is negative infinity. This is actually positive infinity. Let's use the L'Hopital rule. So we can see at some point I did rewrite my power in determinate form to the quotient. Derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. Derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. When we flipped, it will be just x will be negative x, negative 0. We don't have negative 0. Okay, that means this is this limit, this 0, okay, is here. I mean, the answer, the final answer is e to the power of zero is one. Okay, that's important to know that we only did the expo exponent. Okay, okay, the same thing. One plus sine of four x to the power of cotangent x. At zero, sine at zero is zero. Then my base is one. Cotangent, uh, cotangent at zero, cotangent is cosine, um, uh, cosine over sine, which at, from the right hand side, it will be infinity. That means one to the infinity is also indeterminate form. Okay? 
I have now these forms. Uh, and how can you, because sometimes you will probably think, how do I know that this is in determinate form? I mean, we have to kind of memorize. But what you can do, you can also say 1 to the infinity. You can rewrite as a e to the power of ln 1 over infinity. You can put infinity in front. Oh, this will be ln of 1. Ln of one is zero. That means you can see I manage with that equation, cancellation equation. I did rewrite the power form in terms of the product in the exponent, but it's still the product. That means this is indeterminate form. If you will have different things, like let's say infinity to the power of one, or in, I don't know, infinity to the power of uh, infinity to the power of zero. I mean, you can check if you're not getting zero times infinity, that's not indeterminate one. Yeah? We can check, um, we can check uh, infinity to the power of zero. Um, no, this is indeterminate one. We can check uh, like, uh, infinity uh, we can no infinity to the power of zero is definitely indeterminate form. zero to the power of infinity i think yeah zero to the power of infinity is not indeterminate form because let's see zero to the power of infinity e ln zero to the power of infinity e infinity can travel in front and then infinity, ln at zero is negative infinity. And when I have product, big number times negative big number is big number. E at negative infinity is zero. That means this is actually zero. Okay, that means this, the cancellation equation helping us, will help us to investigate if the form, because the power forms are confusing. You will ask me why one to the infinity is indeterminate and one zero to the infinity is not because it's zero and this one is not i end up okay i don't know if i have enough room but let's yeah let's i will erase this later um okay i will rewrite that means this is definitely indeterminate form that means i am rewriting limit as x goes to zero from the right hand side e to the power of ln and my number. 1 plus sine of 4x cotangent of x. And we know, or I will definitely need a room limit as x goes to the No, I want to apply my limit e to the power of that limit. Oops. We can put cotangent in front, ln of 1 plus sine of 4x as x goes to 0. Okay, I, I would like to keep this. Okay, maybe I can put at the end. But you can pause the video. Okay, you can pause the video because we need nice okay that means again i will just focus i can maybe use on that limit okay and my final answer will be e to the power of that limit and i can okay I am focusing on this limit. Limit as x goes to zero, and I will create a fraction. I will keep natural log of one plus sine of four x on the top, and cotangent of x. I can put one over cotangent, cotangent in the denominator, but one over cotangent is tangent. tan x. Oh, why well, switching? Okay, and we can see sine at 0 is 0, ln at 1 is 0, tangent at 0 is 0. 
we do have indeterminate form the quotient for the, the ratio. Limit at zero from the right hand side. Let's apply the L'Hopital rule. Derivative of ln of one plus sine of four x is one over one plus sine of four x times derivative of the inner function. Derivative of sine of four x is cosine of four x times four. And derivative of tangent is secant square of x. Okay, secant at zero is one. Sine at zero is zero. That means we will have one plus zero. And then cosine at zero is one and times four. We have four over one, it is four. And that's actually my, I should maybe use the blue color this is four and that's that value e to the power of four is the final answer okay e to the power of four i can write for you okay i think please focus on the exponent get back to the exponent and i think i have one more let's do it Okay, let's do it. I know that it's a little bit long, but you don't have to watch the session at once. You can just look at some examples and you will have all of the examples covered. Okay, okay. limit as x goes to 1, 4 minus 3x and to the power of 1 over x minus 1. Okay, 4 minus 3, of course, is 1. 1 over 1 over 0 from the right hand side is infinity, 1 to the infinity. And do you think 1 to the infinity is in determinate form? Let's check this. 1 to the infinity. Yeah, if we I'm just saying that if we forgot this, because it we can yeah, mix this. E to the power of ln, 1 to the infinity. E to the power of infinity, ln of 1. E infinity ln of one is zero. Yes, this is indeterminate form because this using the cancellation equation results in that zero times infinity, and this one is obvious. Okay, let me let's rewrite limit as x goes to one e to the power of ln and my number four three x one x minus one. Oh, I don't like it. And then it's e to the power of that limit. Okay, and we can see right away, I can put this exponent in front of the logarithmic function. And now let's focus on, let's focus on this. because the final answer will be e to the power of that. I can keep this. Limit as x goes to one. And I think I have fraction because one over x minus one times ln could, could be rewrite like this, okay? 1 ln of 1 is 0, 1 minus 1, 0. Excellent. I do have a form ready for the L'Hopital rule. Derivative of natural log of 4 minus 3x, it's 1 over 4 minus 3x, times derivative of the inner function, 3, negative 3. And this is 1. 1, then I have 1, 4 minus 3 is 1 times negative three, uh, one. Actually, it's negative three. Let me write a little bit. This will be one, one minus three times negative three, one. The final answer of this limit is negative three. And we know this negative three travels here. The final answer is e to the negative 3, or if we prefer, 1 over e cubed. Okay, 
I think I said this is my last one. I have another one, but let's okay, because that's definitely my last one. Let's do it and we will be, yes, we will be done. And definitely practicing all of these limits, you are per master, you perfect, you master with section 6.8 in determinate forms. Okay, cosine at zero, cosine at zero is one, and sine at zero is zero, but it's positive, is infinity. And we know, yeah, we know one to the infinity, which is this one, it's definitely, oh, wow, crazy. It's definitely in determinate form, that means I will not, I will not test this. Uh, e to the power of ln and my number, cosine of one over sine squared. Then, oh no, then E to the power of limit, because that limit we know will apply to this. And I can put the number in front uh, because one over sine square of x times ln, oh, I forgot x, cosine of x. And limit is at zero. That means we will focus on that e, I mean that exponent limit as x goes to zero. And we can see we have one over sine square of x times logarithmic function, I can create a ratio. Cosine at zero is one, ln at zero, L ln at one is zero, sine at zero is zero. Okay, the L'Hopital rule. Limit as x goes to zero, my writing is limit as x goes to zero. Derivative of ln of cosine, it's one over cosine times derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. Derivative of sine square of x is two times sine of x times cosine of x, derivative of sine. I can cancel out this Cosine at zero is one. Cosine at zero is one. One times two is two. Oh, I lost the negative. Oh, negative still stays. Yeah, and the negative one stays. Okay, e to the negative half. Or e to the positive half in the denominator, or if we prefer that form. And please remember that's not a final answer. One over square root of e. Or e to the negative half. Let's write negative half a little bit more clear. Okay. That value travels to the exponent because we were just taking care of exponent. Okay, this is definitely my last uh, exercise, 20 limits. Please practice all of them. You don't have to practice at once, but make sure that you know all of them and you will be an expert. Thank you.